I've put out more than 200 videos at this point discussing the case for owning gold. I feel that my content is somewhat unusual, though not unique, because I've been able to make the clear case for owning gold based upon information that is readily available. And much of that information comes directly from the masters of the universe, who downplay the importance of gold in speeches and testimonies, all the while writing about its importance repeatedly in the reports that they publish. The only conspiracy that I see when it comes to gold is one of keeping the public ignorant of the importance of gold. And you know how they do it? They believe that people don't have any interest in reading official reports. And they're right. To make matters more difficult for everyone, the advertising dollars go to those who can weave the most entertaining story, whether it's accurate or not. This is true for the so-called news media. It's also true for some, but not all, YouTube channels. There are a few that I have specifically in mind, though I won't mention them here. Most people would rather watch an entertaining 5-minute YouTube video about a secret hidden gold stockpile or gold being removed from Fort Knox in an operation that would put a James Bond film to shame than to spend a few hours reading official documents. I get it. Who has time to go out and do all this research? I'm not going to criticize anybody who doesn't. That's why I'm bringing this information to everyone. Besides, doom porn can be fun. And it sure can make some good money for some of the people who know how to tell a good story. But you know who it doesn't really benefit? You. All of this stuff, as entertaining as it is, keeps you from understanding how the system really works. After my last video, I received several comments, as expected, saying, yeah, but that audit of the Treasury Gold was way back in the early 1980s. A lot can happen between then and now. Fair enough. Let me talk about recent audits. No, I'm not referring to the recent visit of Secretary Treasury Mnuchin or Mitch McConnell to Fort Knox in August of 2017. But I am going to bring that up now anyway, namely because Steve Mnuchin's online comment after the tour, glad the gold is safe, prompted a sarcastic comment from a friend of mine, which was, well, that settles it. The gold's all there. And who wouldn't be skeptical? This was a ridiculous circus sideshow scene that made a mockery of the audit process. No, folks, this is not how audits are actually done. This visit was simply to give Mnuchin and McConnell an all-expense-paid trip to a location that was convenient for them to view a solar eclipse. The trip cost $27,000 because they chartered a C-40 military aircraft to provide passage. Frankly, this stunt did more to harm the credibility of the audit system than anything else. But the statement he made, glad the gold is safe, should have been a signal to some that he is making fun of all those theories that the gold is missing. So what does he know that everyone who believes the gold is missing don't? Well, maybe it's this. It appears that there are lots of reports out there made public for anyone to read. Audits are conducted of the deep storage gold at Fort Knox, Denver, and West Point, and also of the gold stored in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York every few years. Anyone who wants to read these reports can access them and see what they contain. And no, the Treasury Secretary does not go out personally and inventory the thousands of bars, unless of course there is an eclipse to see. Let's see what's inside the 2018 audit report of deep storage gold. And I know what a few people are thinking. Belang P, you're too naive. You spent way too much time reading. You should spend more time watching Doom Porn videos on YouTube. It's certainly more credible than what they will tell you in their fake written accounts. Well, what can I say in response to that? Nothing, really. What we see at the beginning is the Independent Auditor's Report. Wait a minute. Who is this OIG, Belang P? Well, it's the Office of the Inspector General. Yes, it's a government agency, but it's also independent of the Treasury. Conspiracies are pretty tricky things, because in order to pull one off, it requires a lot of people to be complicit. And having an independent agency of government conduct the audit just increases the number of people that would have to remain silent if they found a big problem. In addition, I should note that the audit committee included representatives from KPMG, an independent public accounting firm. This is also mentioned in the report. But Belang P, how do we know that those people even looked inside the vaults? Well, I don't know, but 
but I suspect that signing your name on a public audit report is more serious business and involves a lot more risk than holding a bar and saying, glad the gold is safe. But no, admittedly, I can't state with absolute certainty that they had people in the vaults because I wasn't there myself. But Belang P, even if they were inside the vaults, it wouldn't matter because all of those bars are just gold-plated tungsten. <sighs> Alright, let's move on. It says clearly in the report, in the opinion section, In our opinion, the schedules referred to above present fairly, in all material respects, the balances of the United States deep storage gold and silver reserves in the custody of the Mint as of September 30th, 2018 and 2017, in accordance with U.S. generally accepted accounting principles. And what schedules were they referring to? Namely this information. What is shown is that the deep storage inventory consisted of 245.3 million ounces of gold and 7.1 million ounces of silver. The statutory price of gold was $42.22 per ounce, making the book value of the gold $10.4 billion. The London fix at the time was of course much higher, making the market value of that gold close to $300 billion. The silver had a statutory price of $1.29 per ounce, and so it had a book value of $9.1 million, whereas the London silver fixing price made the market value of the silver about $100 million. But Belang P, you told us that the U.S. government claimed to hold 261 million ounces of gold and kept it on the books at $11 billion. Yes, I did. Let's take a look at the 2019 report of the audit conducted of the gold held by the U.S. in the custody of the vault of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. But Belang P, all of the gold from the vault of the New York Fed was stolen shortly after the Twin Towers were destroyed by terrorists. Um, not quite. The vault of the New York Federal Reserve is located under their main office at 33 Liberty Street. This is half a mile away from where the Twin Towers were located at One World Trade Center Plaza. I don't know what gold was stored under the Twin Towers, but it didn't belong to the U.S. But back to the audit report. The report states that 13.5 million ounces of gold was stored in the vault of the New York Fed. And there you have it. The 245.3 million ounces reported as deep storage gold plus 13.5 million ounces of Federal Reserve held gold equals 258.8 million ounces. But Belang P, that's not 261 million ounces. Correct. The prior audit did not include the working stock of the U.S. Mint. So that's all I really have to say on the subject. There's lots of information out there and I find it much more plausible to believe that the gold exists in the vaults, that the gold is critical to the monetary system, that it is fully encumbered via gold certificate pledges, and that there is much less gold backing each Federal Reserve note than there ever has been before, and it's only getting worse and worse over time, then it is plausible to believe that the gold is missing and that hundreds of people in government are complicit in covering it up. But Belang P., They've obviously gotten to you. Now we think you're in on it too, and you're only trying to fool us. Okay, you got me.